A lot of people would say the heart of a Ferrari is the engine, especially if it's a V12 like this. But with the Pro Sangue, I actually think it's the suspension that's the real heart of this car. Hi, I'm Chris Perkins with Motor One, and welcome to Motor 101. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the active suspension system in the Ferrari Pro Sangue. Automotive engineering is all about compromise, and one of the most important compromises is between ride quality and handling. Imagine a Formula One car and a 1970s Cadillac. The Formula One car is very stiff to control the motion of the body. That helps generate as much grip as possible. That's great on a racetrack, which is nice and smooth, but you wouldn't want to drive a Formula One car on the road. You'd, you'd probably break your back. The 70s Cadillac, by comparison, is very soft and floaty. That's great for comfort, but it's not so good on a racetrack. You need to kind of find some place to exist between those two extremes. But what if you could have a really plush ride with the handling characteristics of a race car? That's the aim of active suspension, and that's why this car has it. Conventional suspension systems are purely reactive. They can only do something in response to an external input. Bump in the road, suspension moves up and down. Active suspension is different. It's proactive. You've probably seen the video of the jumping Lexus. It's hilarious. Welcome to a new dimension of comfort. That was Bose. Yes, the speaker Bose. That was their interpretation of active suspension. The car jumping over that speed bump was really just kind of a party trick, but it shows off the capability of active suspension really well. That's what putting force into the body looks like. Active suspension is not a new idea, actually. Lotus discovered it in the 1980s. It's the only car racing today with a hydraulically actuated, computer-controlled, active suspension system. It really was just for ride quality. That was their initial thought. But what they found was if you have control over the body, you have really unprecedented control over how it handles. Ironically enough, it wasn't Lotus that did it best. It was Williams. 1992, the FW14B, the car that Nigel Mansell won the championship in, had a really amazing active suspension system. Well, obviously it won the championship, but I think what's even more telling is that it was on pole for all but two races of the 1992 season. There's actually a really good bit on active suspension here. They interviewed the, the guys who invented it at Lotus. The performance of this fully active tire load system was a revelation. Conceived as a ride system, it gave astounding control over handling. Active suspension was actually so effective that uh, F1 banned it, as they are wont to do. And still to this day, there is no active suspension in F1. But I tell you what, if Adrian knew he could have active suspension again, he would. The problem with active suspension is that it just takes a lot of effort and engineering to make it work out right. Enter Ferrari. Ferrari wanted an SUV that was better than the competition. A lot of the competition, they use these sort of adjustable suspension systems to kind of find that compromise between ride quality and handling. Ferrari wanted more, so it developed Ferrari Active Suspension Technology, or FAST for short. They worked with a company in Canada called Multimatic, which makes amazing dampers for both road cars and race cars. They're called True Active Spool Valve Dampers, or TASV dampers. You can see the similarities, but the similarities kind of end after a certain point with this guy. The middle here, we've got the motor. The motor is geared to this. There are three gears at the bottom here, a ball screw, and this. This is what makes it work. This is the active suspension. So this is an anti-roll bar. Not every car has two anti-roll bars, but most performance cars do. Obviously, bars do a great job of minimizing body roll, hence the name anti-roll bars, which is the name I like better than sway bars. The problem is it's still a spring. It is a torsion spring. It twists, and a spring adds stiffness into a car. So what's really clever about the Ferrari is that it doesn't have these. The dampers do the work that this would otherwise do without adding the stiffness that this otherwise does. Super powerful, super high frequency, they need their own cooling circuit, so the Pro Sangue is probably the only car in the world that has a separate radiator just for its suspension. So basically, an active suspension system makes sense for Ferrari, but maybe not Toyota. 
or even BMW. Porsche has its own system too called Active Ride, and they only offer it on hybrid and electric cars because they run off of a high voltage electrical circuit. It does a lot of the same things, kind of different philosophically and different in design than the Ferrari system, but a company like Porsche is also gonna see the benefits that this brings to ride and handling. Again, they're one of these companies that's going for that ultimate in both. So it really only makes sense at this, this kind of upper end of the market. As amazing as this car's suspension system is, is it actually really only scratches the surface of what you can do with active suspension. What I think is really interesting is when you get this into a more of a sports car, more of a supercar or a hypercar. Ferrari is gonna use a version of this system on the F80 hypercar, and that's a car that makes downforce similar to you know a GT racing car. With active suspension, you'll be able to give you a really stable aero platform to let those wings, let the diffuser, let everything work like it should, and also optimize for tire grip, how you're loading different wheels wheels and tires in corners, you know, finding grip where other cars might not. But you could also make that car usable on the road. You could make it just as comfortable as, you know, probably any Ferrari sports car. That combination of the ride that active suspension could bring with the handling benefits it could bring is why people follow down this development path. Even after F1 banned it, there was so much potential here that engineers stuck with it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Chris Perkins with Motor One. Please like and subscribe for more.